Hello. 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 Um, <laughs> you want to uh, introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Cecilia, Cecilia Knapp. Nice. That's um, like James Bond then. I don't know why I said Cecilia, Cecilia Knapp. I'm just meant to say Cecilia Knapp. Oh, but it's nice. It gives it a bit of gravitas. It makes, okay, good. makes people, people feel like you're important. So it's good. Uh, Cecilia, you are actually uh, very important, not just as a person, but also you are the current Young People's Laureate for London. Is that correct? That is correct. Well done. Nice. I've got the specifics of the title correct. That's, <laughs> that's my main job. Um, so please, please tell us how that, how did that come about? How is it that you get such a role? Do you need to apply? Are you recommended? Are you just, does it just land on your door? Um, yes, you do apply and you are recommended. So you have to be um, nominated for the role mm -hmm. by um, various organisations, Apples and Snakes being one of them, the Roundhouse, the Barbican, loads of other organisations who I guess have an awareness of who might be appropriate for the role, who's been working mm -hmm. Um, for a certain amount of time who might have the re relevant experience um, so yeah you get nominated and then you apply you write a cover letter you share your relevant experience um, your CV um, and then you have to do a um, an interview with a formidable panel of poets like Jacob Samler Rose and Joel Taylor and people from Spread the Word um, so yeah and then you are appointed, um, you take over from your predecessor. My predecessor was Teresa Lola. Mm -hmm. um, you take over on National Poetry Day um, in October and then you have a year long tenure. So I'll be, I'll be the laureate until October, 2021. Brilliant. And is this the, is the first time you've done, is this the first time you've been a resident poet somewhere? No, so this is, um, Actually, this isn't even the longest residency I've done. I did a two year residency at Great Ormond Street right. Hospital, Children's Hospital. Uh, I was a resident artist at the Roundhouse, which was uh, more about kind of having a space to make work and having a space to get advice from professionals. That was when I was starting out. So I was maybe I was maybe only about 19 or 20 when I was resident artist at the Roundhouse. Um, I've been a resident poet in a couple of libraries um, for uh, for Spine Festival, which is about kind of bringing um, bringing communities together um, in various libraries around London. So I was I was resident at Pimlico Library for a few weeks, and that was just really about designing activity for people that already access the library to kind of um, deepen their engagement with what they were doing when they were in the library. Uh, obviously libraries are amazing spaces for communities and so it was really nice to to be able to design some stuff for older people and families um, and then I've also been uh, a resident writer for First Story for a few years so you, with First Story you have a residency in a school so I'm currently the resident writer at Hampstead School um, and you work with the young people for a couple of terms and you create a book that's published at the end of it so those are kind of the residencies I've done and all of them have been quite different. Yeah and um, there's something really interesting I think about the language you're using to describe them where you're saying about designing activity for people. Mm. So for, the, for people who've never experienced the idea of being a resident artist or a resident writer somewhere, I think it must feel like quite a, quite a large task to just arrive somewhere to be, say, to be told you're now tied to this building or institution for the next however long and you have to create work. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, basically, yeah. And I think, yeah, that can seem quite vast. So what I've always done with residencies is, is kind of thought about what outcomes I might want to have. So obviously with like first story, for example, the outcome is already designed for you. Yeah. You've got to make a book with some um, some students from the school. So you design workshops that, is, that are going to help you get to that point and then you edit the poems and you make a really nice book. Um, with things like a library residency, you, you work with the library staff to get a sense of, of, of who visits the library and what they might be interested in. And then you, you maybe design a, a workshop or a, a, a reading or an afternoon or something that they can engage with. And then the library help you to kind of advertise that and then you're present for that. With um, the Roundhouse, when I was a resident artist there, that was very much just about me kind of having space and time to, to sit and write, which was 
kind of a bit more straightforward really. Um, and with Great Ormond Street, um, I was literally roaming the hospital for one, one afternoon a week for two years. And um, what, what I decided that I wanted to do was I decided that I wanted to meet as many young people and families as possible and help them to write. Yeah. Um, so what I did when I was working in the hospital was I would just walk around and knock on doors and say, hi, this is random, but I'm a poet and I work at the hospital and I wondered if you wanted to try some little writing exercises. I've also got some books that you could read if you're interested in kind of opening up creative writing to yourself mm. in that way. And then after a couple of years, when I'd worked with not only children, but their parents, but also some nurses and cleaning staff and loads of people within the hospital. I had a collection of poems that people had made and I actually ended up making a book out of those too. Um, so that felt like a really nice way to kind of like frame the, the residency. With um, being Young People's Laureate, you, you choose over the course of the year who you're gonna partner with and you partner with four different organizations and you create workshops that can not only inform your own writing, but also will help the young people that you're working with to discover poetry and to write their own poetry too. So I'm working with a couple of charities, a mental health charity and a charity that works with young refugees, um, working with a gallery and also working with some filmmakers. So though you kind of basically think, what am I interested in and what are the outcomes that I want? And then you kind of, basically choose the activity that that you're going to design and you, and I like what you're saying there that uh, with some of these residencies the activity is kind of prescribed or the outcomes predetermined uh, and then with others it's more open and you're able to kind of like find your way through it mm. I think there must be there must be a huge difference between doing just a one-off workshop and feeling like you need to get something out of it as opposed to doing like a prolonged amount of time in a space where you've actually got those opportunities to fail and and recover is that yeah, something you've experienced definitely it's the the pressure's off in in a, in a way even though it feels quite a big responsibility to 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 be attached to this venue like you said earlier um i think that it's it's more about embedding creativity and writing into a space in a more kind of consistent and nuanced way than it is about being like boom I'm going into this workshop and people are going to do an evaluation form afterwards so I've got to get them to write a good poem in an hour you know and um, there were times at Great Ormond Street where I would um, I'd walk around the hospital no one would want to work with me so I because they were either feeling too sick or you know there were loads of reasons why people couldn't quite engage and so I would just um, sit in the calf and talk to people um, and perhaps do a quick writing exercise with them. Or I'd like stick some paper on the wall and ask everyone to just contribute a word as they walked past and create work in that way. You have to be quite responsive because oftentimes you're in environments that don't really, your environment doesn't really care about your plan for making a poem that day. So you just kind of adapt and yeah, and, and not yeah that the pressure to create isn't isn't so much you're just more you're more there to be a presence of of kind of creativity in the space i guess yeah uh, and i think also what you're saying there is like it gives all of the people within that space the opportunity to engage with you as an artist as opposed to just engaging with the activity that you're running in that moment yeah absolutely totally and and in and in in not in a pressured way it's it's an offer it's not a mm -hmm. It's not mandatory, um, and uh, you know sometimes people just say, "No, don't fancy it." And sometimes, and sometimes it's a difference between someone having a good day and a bad day. But going in as a going in and not having any expectation um, is a really really nice thing. Amazing. Um, that's the end of the questions. It's always so short. Um, do you have a do you have a writing task for us? Yes, my writing task is about using found text to generate ideas for yourself. Do you want me to just talk you through it? Yes, please. Cool, so I just did a workshop for Apples and Snakes that was all about um, starting things and, and, and finding beginnings. And I think that it's really difficult to start sometimes. So my writing exercise is about starting from different points and seeing where that takes you, basically. 
um, and seeing if that challenges your patterns or your habits and opens things up a bit more for you. Um, so my, my writing exercise is find five pieces of found text from around your flat or on your phone. So for example, you could have um, a recipe, a line from a recipe. You could have um, a, uh, a line from an informative email that you've got. You could have a text, you could have like a text on your phone. Um, you could have uh, an instruction from a like instruction manual, um, or you could take a line from a magazine or something, and do a two minute free write beginning with each of these prompts. For example, your package has been delivered. What what might that open up for you? Rather than just starting with something that's kind of like, today I feel this. What does that open up for you? What does what what does blend the butter with the flour? Where does that take you? Does it take you to a certain place? Does it, does it design a concept for you that you your poem can operate within, if you see what I mean? What happens if, you, if you're starting with connect the car battery to the red jump lead? Where does that take you? Um, and I think it's about noticing how different starting points take you to, to different places they change the tone and they change the direction of your piece um and they and they push your habits further i think so that is something that i've been trying recently in my own writing to to discover what i want to say in a different way to not necessarily know where i'm going and to get lost while i'm writing using um, a more random or oblique prompt to start with so that is my writing exercise amazing uh, Cecilia Knapp, thank you so much. Uh, see you again very soon. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.